Greetings, everyone. I'm back with my Pokemon playthrough. I see we are in the forest with some flowers. This song is very eerie. We'll start out checking out our Pokemon. Applebee's is coming out first, rightfully so. His Sprout. What is this? Is this Bellsprout? Cool. Cool. Maybe we'll level that Bellsprout up a bit today. We'll see. We'll play things by ear today. Oh, today is Friday. I played a Mega Man 11 demo today, and demos are a dying breed these days. Do not see demos very often, but I think we're kind of in an in like an era where we're starting to see them make a little bit of a comeback. At least to some extent, you'll see demos on like the Nintendo eShop pretty often. Still not so much on your typical consoles. I remember back in the PS3 days, I was like starving for PS3 games to play because we had like two. It was like Rock Band and Resistance Fall of Man. And so I would spend a lot of time just sitting there rifling through the PSN store looking for any demos. And I would play them a lot, but I would kind of be afraid for my parents to see me playing them because I like kind of felt like I didn't want to do anything on the PS3 without their permission. And I also thought that they were going to think that I like bought these things or something, but no, I was I was just playing the games. I was playing the free demos. That's all I was doing. I swear. Those were good times. I remember there being a Warhawk demo. Oh man. How did that Warhawk demo work? I forget how it worked. But I think there was a Warhawk demo. I played that quite a bit. And there was a Battlefield 1943 demo, which was like a paired back version of Battlefield for Xbox 360 and PlayStation. PlayStation 3, and it was a downloadable only title, I think, and I really liked its simplicity. It really paired things back in a similar way that Battlefield 1 kind of made things much more simple. But I really like that about it. I have no idea where we are. I'm just completely disoriented. Uh, but yeah, the Battlefield 1943 demo, the way that functioned was it only let you play one map, and I believe it only let you play for like an hour, I want to say. So you'd be only be able to play an hour of Battlefield 1943, and then it would kick you out and be like, thanks for playing. And so, because PSN accounts are free, I proceeded to make about 25 accounts so I could play Battlefield 1943 for 25 hours on the Wake Island map. Do it through the gate. Okay, I'm just going to try and get a sense as to where we are here. Skinny trees, charcoal man's... Do we have any HMs right now? Swift and Flash. Flash is our only HM. Okay, so we do not have cut as of yet. I'm not sure what we should be doing. I'd assume continue going through that forest. Want to make some balls? <laughs> oh, man. This Mega Man 11 demo is the first demo I've played in a long time. I used to play a lot of PC demos too, but I like didn't have a PC that could play any of them. But darn, I tried. I played uh, some Just Cause 2 demo on my laptop and it barely ran, but boy did I just obsess over that for a while. Just play nothing but a Just Cause 2 demo for hours. Uh, there was also a flat out demo, which had like one track, I wanna say. Or, no, it might not have even had a track. I think it just had, like, the high jump. It just had the high jump where you try and fling your guy out of the car and make him get as high as possible. And I played the crap out of that. Eventually, like, uh, what was it? Maybe... Hmm, I don't know, maybe a f few years later, I got a copy on uh, PS2 of Flat Out. And I got to that point and I got to the high jump point and I like high jumped once and then just moved on with my life. I don't know what it was about me just obsessing over wanting to play things so badly. I think demos, there wasn't a single demo that I played where I wasn't like, man, I really wish I had the full game so I could just play this a lot more. Like on the PS3, Dark Void was a game where you had like a jetpack or something. And I remember that game reviewing very poorly. But I played a little bit of the demo, and it still made me obsess over it and made me really want it. But these days, now that I actually have a sizable library and a backlog that's continuously growing, I don't really have much reason to 
you know, play demos unless it's a video game that hasn't come out yet that I'm actually interested in. Like, uh, multiplayer betas, I'll play those. Like the Battlefield 5 beta or the Black Ops 4 beta. Fine wit. This probably won't be very effective, huh? Yeah. Scratch, that's more effective than my vine wit. What does this do? Special attack. Oh, okay. So I see, I turned off like animations and I guess that turns off a lot of these attack animations and I guess it will just increase, increase the pace by a tiny bit. But every millisecond we save counts. We'll switch out Applebee's and just finish this Paris off. Maybe Applebee's will level up here. I don't think so. I don't think we'll... This guy's got enough XP for Applebee's to level up. Michael was mentioning in the chat how the new Pokemon games have like an EXP share where you get a kill or knock out a Pokemon and all of your Pokemon gain XP, which is a very nice addition. I'm just going to battle one more time. I don't need to heal that bad. Because, like, every battle feels like you're getting a good chunk of XP, and you're boosting your characters up a little bit more, and it feels really good. It makes uh, all the random encounters feel a little bit more substantial, which is nice. No! Why do you lower my... Oh, no, he's doing it some more. Good. Yikes. This Bellsprout isn't effective against anything in here. I guess grass is weak against flying. Okay. Now I gotta switch. Uh, Applebee's, I choose you. <laughs> I don't know why I'm leveling up this Applebee's. We're just grinding again. That's all we're doing here. Jeez, even Applebee's is missing. Like I mentioned in a previous episode, I don't think I've ever actually pursued a bug type in any Pokemon game. Is there a bug legendary? That would be funny. Like a legendary bug that's just crawling through the grass. And there's a select few who have been lucky enough to spot it. Bugs bother a lot of people. They don't bother me so much. I just don't like having them crawl on me. Because it feels weird they've got those really tiny little feet. And then they tickle ya. That's not very pleasant. A lot of people don't like spiders. I don't mind them all that much. I've had to kill a lot of spiders because I've been around people who are very afraid of spiders. Just had to deal with it. Team Rocket? Oh, it's the Slowpoke Tail Peeps. Aren't you glad I told you that? What? <laughs> That's really weird. Old lady? I already talked to her, didn't I? Forces watched over. Okay. No mischief for me. Ilex Forest. Well, I don't know what to talk about anymore. Uh, let's try and vine whip this Caterpie. That's not very... Oh, cool. Oh, it isn't very effective. He's just a low enough level that it does enough damage. Oh, most of this is sitting there and tapping A. You know what makes Pokemon infinitely more tolerable? Is the fast forward function of these emulators. That's what let me, like, blaze through Fire Red in, I don't know, like, two weeks. So the fast forward is so nice. So, so nice. It makes grinding so much easier. So much nicer. It's kind of weird, I don't know, just how you invest your time in order to become more powerful in an RPG, that's weird. I played through Nino Kuni 1 not too long ago, that had a good amount of grinding in it, uh, but there was this one island. <laughs> this was a nice long time investment where there was one island and there was a slim chance that the certain uh, monster would appear there and the monster basically served no function other than having like, a ton of XP reward for killing it. And he would run away very quickly, kind of similar to a Cactar from Final Fantasy or something. So, basically you would have to, like, walk around this island. He had very specific, um, small little areas where he would show up. 
And so it was just walking around on this island, going through random encounter, random encounter, random encounter for hours, just hoping that this guy would pop up. And if he did, you had to hurry up and smack on him, because otherwise he'd just run away. And you'd lose your opportunity. And he gave a ton of XP. Like, whenever I found, like, three of those guys at once, it was amazing. Because the XP would just roll in, and you get XP for, like, everyone at the same time, which means there's, like, 15 XP bars that are increasing. Which is awesome. My mind whips are half gone. I'm gonna have to switch out to a different Pokemon, but our Sprout will level up. At least I hope so. It's right there. Boy, they really like hardening themselves. Jeez. <laughs> nice. Okay, here we go. I remember having a magic cart. And I really wanted to level him up so that he had something other than Splash, so I dropped him off at the daycare, where the Pokemon just just kind of level up the longer you let them sit there. And, uh... I came back after, I don't know, maybe like a month of playing the game, I came back and the Magikarp leveled up like four levels. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, four levels, awesome! And then I went to go fight with it, hoping that, uh... It had something other than Splash, but no, all it had was Splash. And I was sad. Maybe we'll level up both our Applebee's and our plant. Yay, level 11. And learned to rap. And our Applebee's leveled up, cool. Comet Punch. Oh, nice, we're gonna punch some fools. That's good. I'm sure Tucker will be happy that his Applebee's knows something other than Tackle. You know, a lot of people, my dad included, they like leaving the windows open overnight. Because they want to get that fresh night air blown through. But what happens is after you fall asleep, it gets really cold. Because in the nighttime it gets cold, and so you wake up and it's freezing! It's freezing in the house or apartment or whatever. And then you gotta go through and close all the windows again to try and warm up, but my dad, he was different. He would just not close the windows back up. He would leave them wide open all day. What happens when they're wrapped? Oh, it just hurts them a tiny little bit. And that always kind of irked me, that's why... That's one of the small perks of living by yourself, is that you get to ensure that the temperature is controlled to your liking. You don't have to worry about adhering to others' whims as far as the thermostat or temperature is concerned. So I would not open the door or window at night because I knew it would be very chilly in the morning. When I was... Younger, I would play a lot of PS3, and the PS3 sounds like a jet, especially once that f fan gets going. And so, like in the winter time, I would open the window, crack the window open a little bit, but we didn't have screens on the windows. But my rationale was that I would open up the window a little bit in the winter time, get some cold, fresh air in there, and that would, like, the ambient temperature would lower to such a point that the PS3's fans would no longer have to kick in. And I think uh, I was playing a lot of Red Dead Redemption at the time, and the fan would spin up very frequently while playing Red Dead Redemption. So my window would be open a lot. But I'd play a lot while it was dark out, being winter, and it being dark almost immediately after getting back from school. And uh, the just the light of the TV, I wouldn't have to have my light on, but the light of the TV would attract a lot of bugs. And so there would be bugs galore, and it was very disturbing. It was very uncomfortable because it was either suffer through warm and loud PS3, or leave the door, or yeah, suffer through that and leave the window closed, or open the window and suffer through a bunch of bugs, but have a quieter PS3. You know, it's the, it's the little sacrifices we have to make these days. Cool, our Pokemon are healed up. 
And that'll be it for my episode. Thanks so much for listening to me blabble on for a while. <laughs>